To find a patient, type in their last name, then their first name in the search bar. If you are unable to find the patient, delete the search, click refresh, and begin searching again. Click on the patient's name once to preview the images. The type of image will be listed in the top left hand corner. Select patient. Find images by image type and exposure date. Right click to add a comment, move an image to another patient, or inactivate an image. Double left click to open up an image. You will first be directed to the Explorer tab. Adjust brightness, contrast, and sharpness as needed. Your default settings should have the contrast all the way to the left, the brightness in the middle, and the sharpness all the way to the right. To change the default settings, click on the large wrench and make adjustments in the general tab. These adjustments will be applied automatically to all new volumes. Scroll through the coronal, sagittal, and axial views to begin looking for pathology and treatment planning. Click on Move, Rotate Volume to either move or rotate the volume. Left click and hold moves the volume and right click and hold rotates the volume. Deselect the Move Rotate Volume button to move and rotate the crosshairs instead. Left click moves the crosshairs, right click rotates them. Center the crosshairs to your area of concern. To annotate an area of concern, click on the circle annotation button. Drag and drop the circle into your area of concern. This annotation is now saved under your object browser for future reference. To go back to your home view, click on Restore View. To reference the annotation, double click on it in the object browser. Once the volume has been thoroughly investigated, you are ready to extract a pan and begin implant planning. Click on the implant tab. Now we're ready to set up our views. To change the default settings inside of the implant tab, click on the large wrench. Adjust the cross section width and length as needed. The width is typically set up at 2 millimeters, and the length is typically set up around 58 millimeters. Adjust the focal trough and panoramic curve width as needed. The thicker the panoramic curve, the more area it will include. However, this could cause your pan to look blurry. So adjust to the patient's anatomy as needed. Adjust the amount of slices you want in your view. This is typically set to one by three. Adjust your view panes as needed. And maximize the panes as needed. It is now time to extract a 2D pan. Set the panoramic curve by clicking the A button. This auto fits the panoramic curve to the patient. Click the F button to auto focus the pan to the patient's anatomy. Scroll through your pan to see if the panoramic curve is lining up correctly. If not, you can make adjustments by clicking the hand button. Move the reference points 
to better align the curve to the middle of the patient's bone. To set your data points in place, click the hand button again. The next steps are optional to increase our quality for our extracted 2D pan. Click on the 3D button under the panoramic option. Click on the setting MIPBW. Under 3D rendering, choose Panoramic 1 from the drop down menu. Move the transparency slider bar all the way to the right. The number will read 10. Remove annotations if desired by clicking on the Show Hide button and then take a quick snapshot by clicking the Snapshot Camera button. To view the snapshot, click on the 2D icon on the left side of the screen. You now have a 2D rendered snapshot of your 2D pan. Click on the 3D icon on the left side of the screen to return to your 3D volume. Click on the Show Hide button to make your annotations visible again. Use the slider bar above the red slices to move the slices to your implant site. Mark the nerve, if applicable, by clicking on the Draw Nerve button. Use the arrows to adjust the pan to better view the canal. Begin marking the nerve in either of your slices or pan view or a combination of the two. Check the accuracy of the nerve placement and make adjustments in the slices where necessary. To set the nerve placement, click anywhere on the screen. Move the red slices back to the center of the implant if needed. Choose an implant from your implant library. Use the down arrow to expand the implant manufacturer's implant libraries. Choose the implant you want to treatment plan. If this is an implant you use often, you can set it as your default. Choose the tooth number, if applicable, and click Add to Plan. Place the implant in any of your slices or views. Adjust the tilt of the implant as needed. If you have a default implant set and would like to use it, click on the implant with the plus symbol. Left click to place and adjust the implant like before. Move the red slices to the center of the implant just placed. Make adjustments as necessary. Click on the implant centric view for a final review of placement. This will provide a 360 degree rotational view of the implant you have chosen. Placement can also be viewed in the 3D rendering of the skull. Click on the Save View button to have the plan accessed from other Office PCs. This view and plan is accessible in the Object Browser. Left click on it to access the saved view.